that's in there or something that <coughs> yeah. that, that's yeah. just is that part of it it goes into the town system or it's just a pond or a I, pool that gets I, wet and I, I think it just drains off into there from the hill or whatever yes because there's also um, the Midas muffler or vinyl or whatever they call it one of the things that um, first first is to say is that the town I think the Putney Road plan encourages multi-use development so I think that uh, having you know Retail space, industrial space, with mixed with um, accommodation of you know apartments or is, is is desirable. So we would encourage that. Secondly, um, the requirements for parking, although stipulated in our book in a formulate numeric way, we are of late being quite lenient with I think that practice is nice, particularly where you have particularly where you have <coughs> say structures or buildings where there's a common use mm -hmm. so in this case you've got how printing in the back and how printing in the front so we wouldn't look at that as having say two cars with the same build the same person could be walking backwards and forwards and it's been a tendency recently to to or in, a, in I think a few applications to to encourage reduction in parking spaces, okay. but with a view to providing parking in the future, should the need arise. Right. So let's say you think it's 76. We might quite happily say, well, we'll take 60, mm -hmm. uh, 20, say 20 percent reduction, um, with the caveat that if the use changes, that possibly. Additional parking would be quite, would be required in the future. Right. One of the things is we've, we're putting a lot of blacktop in, or there is a lot of blacktop, and we're trying to, um, I won't say minimise it, but encourage, you know, better use of the land. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about circulation patterns here, <coughs> trucks and things like that coming in there? Well, <coughs> from the standpoint of trucks. <coughs> Your big truck is a 40-foot tractor-trailer? Most of the time, Most yes. of the time. Yes. And presently, when they do come in, they come in through their existing driveway, and basically they make a U-turn, and this is where their building ends, and they have a loading door right about here. <coughs> so, you know, what we visualize is deliveries that come in, probably during the morning, like they have been, before the parking lot is getting really full, and there would be enough room for them to pull in here, back, even if there was a car here, back down, and we visualize like an overhead loading door here for the trucks, rather than trying to get them to pull in here and back down to that. But we believe that a 40-foot tractor-trailer box would easily be able to make turns within the property. And you never have a 53-footer? I can't say never, but not very often, though. I think part of the uh, Putney master plan was also talking about uh, sort of density, getting the density closer to Putney Road and mm -hmm. leaving the parking in the back of the buildings. Um, I know you said that the back building is going to be potentially loud during the daytime, I'm assuming. Well, when I say loud, it, it's a repetitive noise, probably like when I'm in Greg's office at least for me, about as noisy as what I hear with that yeah. heater running, that kind of repetitive noise. Um, as far as... It would be more noisy for the people up above. Yeah. Uh -oh. Well, in, in this case, this building being in the back sort of strays away from that, putting the buildings to the front of the site and putting the parking in the back. So I don't know if that, uh, with all the other things you're trying to accomplish, if that building could be pushed to the front. Um, I don't know what the landscaping is like either, but it it seems like that may also allow you to um, have more efficient uh, more efficient parking layout. Just because this dead end, typically, you know, it, the traffic flow doesn't work very well, especially by knocking out, you know, 20% of the spaces that's allowable. I don't know, just a. Well, I know that the entire project right now, you might say, has dead ends. There's no through, like, you know, Greg, you drive in, you pull into his area, 
<clears throat> and you can loop out. And like with Chris Perros, you drive in and you either hit fast and all, and you make a U-turn and you back out, or you go to Chris's Redemption or Gone Golf, and you do the same thing. Um, Is there I, a possibility for a, for a rear exit or rear entrance closer to the to the building you're proposing at the back? I mean, can you cut across in front of fast and all that? So something could, the traffic could flow in one, and I don't yeah. know what the rights of way are or not. Boy, I, I'd be a little, <clears throat> little bit concerned here. I mean, that would probably be something that we'd ask our civil engineers to look at for turning radiuses, and then start to run by yeah. our two neighbors. Um, yeah. We we saw John here earlier and explained to him what we were asking for, and he said, "Great, I'm going home." And we actually had a conversation with Chris, and he said, "Well, I appreciate it, but I'd like to stick around. So fine. I mean." I mean, it seems like you might be able to put those handicap spaces near the uh, those five spaces, I mean, just near the front of the building, almost. I mean, if there if that walkway and the canopy is already there, is there going to does there need to be a ramp or anything? You won't need a ramp because everything will be degraded. I mean, it's a, it's quite a level site. We put the the handicap spots over on this side. You have a covered ramp here going into the canopy. You know, whether you put the handicap spots in front here or on that side, that can, that's a very minor adjustment. It really doesn't have much impact it, on the overall use of the project. So we could put them as close as we wanted to the front door. What's the height of the new structure? Uh, approximately 40 feet. 40 feet? Yeah, because it'll be three full stories plus the roof. And just talk a little bit about the stormwater management, because we've got extra roof space or so we're increasing the we're increasing the. <coughs> actually, we're not increasing the impervious surface, are we? Uh, a little, a little yeah. bit. At the we back, are increasing the, back, yeah. the impervious surface that's there right now. And uh, what do you have there now? You have some catch basins into old drywalls. Drywalls, okay? Nothing uh, goes into a town system. Nothing goes into the town system. <clears throat> My experience with that part of Putney Road. Um, is with Woodbridge Athletics about five years ago. And, you know, the civil engineers are going to have to take soil samples and determine how much infiltrators they have to put in. But basically everybody that doesn't have stormwater going to a discharge point has either got to keep it on their property with a settling basin or put it below the parking. And that's what we visualize happening after the engineers get through with it. So you, you think you'll have uh, tanks under the under the parking lot? They're really not, they're not really tanks, they're well per se. Yeah, they're yeah. half barrels. Half like barrels, barrels. Yeah. Right, yeah. filled yeah. with stone over the top and yeah. stuff like that. Yep. And you give it consideration to the uh, pervious uh, asphalt? Haven't looked into it yet. Certainly can give consideration to it. Um, I, I know we've had projects where we've done pervious concrete, well, but I haven't I seen... It's asphalt or concrete? It's asphalt. Yeah, both. asphalt. It, both. It, I think there is both. They've said they yeah. got <clears throat> yeah. pervious pervious. Yeah. I, know, I know of one project that we were involved with that had the pervious concrete. Yeah. It's only been two winter cycles, and it seems to be holding up, but I don't know that much about it. And again, I would defer that to the civil engineers. You have a, I mean, you have a, to all intents and purposes, a level site there. Yes. So you just have to grade the parking lot to get the water to run as it comes yeah. off the roofs to wherever it's going, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, except you don't have any place to go to daylight out of there. That's all, right? No, there's no daylight there. That no, whole right. thing, yeah. I not, mean, at least not to the river, anyway. <laughs> not to the river. I mean, if you look at um, People's United Bank, if you look at Sherwood Williams, that whole section right there, they're either keeping it on their property in swales, or like in Sherwood Williams parking lot, it fills up half the parking lot. Yeah. Right. And leaches out back towards his way up. <coughs> Probably. Yeah. Right. What What about snow removal? Snow removal. That goes. What, what do you do now, and does it change? Right now, we leave it on site, and when a bad winter, we'll have it uh, trapped out. Yeah. So this plan's not really going to alter from this, that standpoint. I wouldn't think. Well, you have a, 
you'll have a, actually have a much greater surface that you'll clear here than you do now, correct? Right. Yes. Right. But if we reduce it, perhaps per your right. guy's suggestion, it might be very similar to what it is now. Right. <clears throat> is there any green space for the residents? Place for them to like sit on a bench, walk a dog. Um, truthfully, that's something that I well, can take into consideration. I know that um, the whole concept that I <clears throat> proposed here is very similar to the shops in Essex and the third and fourth floor have the apartments and they have a green space with a playground because when we wait for our table at the restaurant, the kids play out there. They yeah. all share. Yeah. So that's something that I think would uh, enhance the project and should be considered strongly. Even though they're one bedrooms, I have <clears throat> two one bedroom apartments above my offices on Canal Street. Mm -hmm. And one is a single woman with a three year old child, and the other one is his grandmother in the other apartment. So it is nice to have a place where kids can hang out. I think it'd be something that would enhance the rentals. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they do have visitors, grandparents do have visitors. Mm -hmm. is, the, is the reason that the. Um, machinery into that, the small building in the back, in the back be, to keep that away from the residences? <clears throat> the, um, the back space <clears throat> is light industrial. The buildings at that area, when you first turn in, you see the new veterinary clinic, and it's a wood frame structure, strip shingle roof, two different type of compositions, porches. You go further back in, you see the light industrial use that Chris and his family created with, you know, the Redemption Center building. So what we're trying to do is take this building and complement it with that. Hopefully when the old veterinary clinic is eventually next generation spruced up, whatever John and his wife do, they'll pick up at that theme and then this building which Chris has built, we'll pick up on that thing. So in other words, we do visualize it being a metal-sided building to give it that light industrial look to complement the Redemption Center building. I guess what I am looking at, but I can't, uh, I don't understand enough, is uh, looking 40, 50, 100 years in the future, how that entire niche area gets infilled and developed and um, I was thinking well what what would happen if the Sunoco station goes out of business and that space is now available for redevelopment um, how is there anything that could be or should be done now on your property to facilitate better development on the front property. When if, I'm not sure if I'm quite expressing myself right. I'm just looking at, because uh, I'm trying to imagine that whole master plan sort of for that area. And um, maybe uh, in a sense trying to protect against haphazard development that, uh, that the biggest doesn't lead to a cohesive right. the biggest logistic thing that I can think of Spoon at that part and you and Chris correct me if I'm wrong but I believe that the Sandry property is conservatively five feet <coughs> if not maybe eight feet higher in elevation than your property so you know, if it was all one level plane, I think you'd have an easier time saying, gee, you know, we want to place our utilities where a connecting parcel might incorporate. But you do have about oh, it's eight, at least five to eight, it's eight feet. five to eight feet of elevation difference. This kind of <coughs> dropped off in the yeah, back area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Can, can you just talk a little bit about we were mentioning green space there? I, th I think if this, talk, talk a little bit about the existing vegetation and landscaping and whether or not we can improve that. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of pretty nice 
large well, trees actually, there, which may not be on your property, but they're in, yeah, well, Greg, in the entrance you, you way. You probably want to come up here and take a peek at this with me because um, where we're at right now is right behind that tree in the proper perspective is the entrance to the building. Yep. And, you know, there's arbor vitae or, you know, spreading junipers in the front there. And it's grass. And I know right about in this area here, there's a black top with a little bit of a curve in this grass. And realistically, everything on the west and the south side looks like you mow it. Mm -hmm. And everything on the north side is just overgrown vegetation. And everything going to the east is trees and then all trees going up the slope. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And this land here, which is all grass, obviously that's the land that will be a lot of And then there is, like you mentioned, this large tree right here, which is actually on the abutter's property. I actually think, Greg, wouldn't this be the apartments up above in that flat spot? Yes. And this here would be like the Toa slope? Yeah. And this would be the, the slope itself where all those trees show. So you own to the Toa slope? Correct. Right. So all the trees that are on the slope that buffer the apartments belong to the apartments. So is there something nice that you can do? I mean, we've got, we're moving from a purely commercial property to a mixed, mixed use or mixed residential. There's something that can be done in the scheme to one, add green space or a little more green space, even if it's, you know, a trade-off with parking spaces or something. Mm -hmm. And secondly, add landscaping to the, to the structure to help it blend in. From the standpoint of tonight's presentation, we haven't incorporated yeah, anything sure. landscaping for the structure because we know you're going to expect that. And I think, you know, um, my perspective of tonight's meeting is really three bulleted points. One is maybe consider moving the handicapped park and right close to the elevator, which makes good sense. Number two, you got some apartments, try to give some green space where the grandkids could play makes an excellent marketing item. And number three was, you know, even though the town says you're supposed to have X number, if we can tone that down with the right to always come back if the use changes, we would certainly take all those into yep. consideration in the final planning. And the only other thing would be having a, almost a parking grid that conforms more to a, uh, the, to, to avoid the haphazard um, what Spoon was talking about. Um, just just because the parcel lines are there doesn't mean that the, you know, it, it reduces paving, get rid of 20% of the, and maybe those are based on slope, I'm not sure. But. Um, right here, Greg, yes. your west property line almost immediately starts the toe of the slope and goes up to Sandry, right? That's correct. And this is all Sandry, so everything in this portion is at a higher elevation. Um, you know, trying to look 40 or 50 years down the road is pretty hard. I don't even know if well, I mean, not, even, but, not even that. I yeah. mean, just for the sake of, it's, think about the intersection right here where, you know, at this corner where it says uh, base of one inch iron pipe, you know, two cars are, we're getting ready to turn it just it's it's awkward it's 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 You're talking in here yeah it's just it's confusing and it doesn't conform to any recognizable grid um, i guess i, I don't know that's, that's, that's just my opinion that's de defined by the topology and the culverts and ditches that are in the back i think to some degree mm -hmm. i think the final plans by the, my goal was to make sure i could meet the town's requirement for required parking um, my comment to you would be that from there to there is 20 feet. That's your depth of your parking spot. From there to there is 20 <coughs> feet. Looking at this in between from here to here, uh, conservatively we're pushing 40 to 50 feet. That's you double really, the amount. Huh? That's double the amount you need, though, for regular parking. I mean, 24 right. feet. Right. So, I mean, we could certainly hold Pull that in. <clears throat> as long as we always know that we have the right to come back if we have a tenant that's going to say, gee, I need 
40 parking spots, you know, to fulfill yeah. my goals. There'd be an, oppor uh, an opportunity for like a, a turnaround or a drop off. It's gonna, if it's going to be old people <coughs> who don't have cars, maybe. Or... I've got a lot of gray hair. I just say that. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> You do too, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, <laughs> I'm talking about the elderly. If this yeah. is whether low income or whatever it is. It won't be low income because it's all privately funded. So, you know, they're going to be market driven. They won't be part of the Wyndham Housing Foundation or anything like that. Um, my comment about drop offs, and again, if you've got a covered canopy here, here, and here, and you're parking here, uh, could we consider, you know, not having one or two spots here so you could have a drop-off point? We certainly could kind of go through that during the, the next round yep. as consideration. Have you uh, um, seen the comments from the fire department? We have seen nothing. No, so, so I haven't seen the comments. You're more than welcome to have this letter. Pardon me, sir? You're more than welcome to have this letter. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, basically, they're talking about sprinkling both buildings, independent supplies, and so on and so forth. And the debts. We actually have sprinklers in the building now, right? Correct. Yeah. We have a, we have a six inch main that services the building itself. Yeah. Um, you might, might like to take that into consideration in your plan. And also, um, Public Works is looking at treating the building separately from a supply standpoint. Whether that's the way you view it, I don't know, but... From a separate... Separate, there'd be separate water, water meters. Separate, separate water meters and separate sprinkler lines. Yes. I think it's the top, like okay. a ton of that information is there. The, um, there's one other just thing I would like to just bring to your attention is that uh, multifamily residential is capped to eight units. And you were talking about nine, I think. We were talking possible. We we're, were talking nine. Yep. So the cap at eight units is driven by what? Section two three one one. Okay. Let's find that. Brian, why is it eight and not nine or ten? You don't know. <laughs> is that because anything greater than that becomes a PUD? Uh, uh no, nope, don't think so. Oh, I don't know. Up to eight. Okay. 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 What's that again? What's the uh, what's the zoning right now that we're we're, we're just talking about? Uh, you can have up to eight units. Where? In a mixed commercial in a mixed district. mixed residential use, you can have in a commercial district. The zoning ordinance, well, I haven't found the exact page, states that you can have multiple buildings, multiple uses, but residential units. There's a maximum of eight. Their proposal, that structure they shown us, suggested nine. Right. Yeah. Where's, the, where's the eight number, yeah, if right? There's no, uh, if nobody can explain the reason for that. Um, yeah, I'm thinking uh, in an, in, I mean, it's an arbitrary, is it, is it only because people in a small town couldn't conceive of more. Um, what year is this written? Because <laughs> I can think you go into a more urban area, you might have yeah. 500 units above a c c commercial enterprise. Um, so I just wonder whether anybody could conceive of a reason that he couldn't have 9 or 12 or 30. I mean, it's a commercial uh, district, so isn't the main use supposed to be commercial, not residential? Like, if, I don't know, maybe the theory is eventually their residents could take over, and now they're complaining about all the businesses there, and that it's loud, and the traffic's loud, you know, so it's eventually, like, converting the use. 
not the one apartment well, I don't think is going to make a difference. So I'm just saying in theory. Like, so you think the idea is to protect the commercial character of the... Uh, yeah, I guess. This, the North End business or the, the North End sustainable plan is calling for dense urban development, which I know it's, it's, it's not very dense. No. No. When you look at, and I speak from experience, when you look at a one-bedroom apartment and you have 750 square feet for that one bedroom, you have a very spacious apartment. Oh, you yeah. know that? Yeah. yeah, and, I, and I, I know because we have that above our offices and mm -hmm. they actually never even hit the newspaper to be rented because as soon as the tenant says, gee, I'm going to leave, but my friend wants the place, mm -hmm. they're gone. It also allows for condominiumizing. It's something to look into. Yep, I've made I, 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 I think that yep. I can't even find the number eight in here. Yep. I'm, I was looking for it, but uh, section um, two three one one, I guess. Yeah, it's, the two three one one is one paragraph with no numbers in it. Um, so so certainly, if you came forward with an application that had more than eight, like nine or twelve, then the board would consider it. Okay. Right, does Act 250 apply to this? Local Act 250? Commercial development over an acre? Yeah, are we over one acre? So I, pardon me, sir? Are we over one acre? We're over one acre, but my understanding is because it's in the commercial district, it doesn't fall under the Act 250 unless we actually had more than nine, ten or more apartments triggered the Act 250. Uh -huh. ten, ten, ten. But in any case, that wouldn't necessarily stop you. Trigger. It just means you have another no, layer I mean, of, of approval. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, going through an Act 250, on this project, once we've met all the town criteria, it's going to be very straightforward. It's just a matter of hitting the checklist. It's an easy yeah. project to do with Act 250. Act 250 would not be a hurdle in this case. It'd be just another set of checklists. That's yeah. all. Okay. I'm not sure how units are treated under Act 250, whether that, uh, subdivisions of 10, definitely. But you're not subdividing ten times. No. Here. I'd have to read the book again. Yeah. Do you have any other questions of us? No. I mean, you've given me five bulleted points to address, and we certainly respect and try to yeah. incorporate them into the plan. I think they're very valid. I, th I think that, uh, to just to go back to one of the points, I'm not sure you have on this. The sort of turning radius is the trucks and the, fire, the ladder truck, the fire department particularly, that's not addressed there, how that gets in and gets out. We've had um, certainly parking designs altered in some commercial developments by fire truck access requirements. And um, <coughs> you may have experienced it yourself. You know, Mike comes down and says, I've got to get the fire truck in here, and that parking space is right where I don't need it. Mm -hmm. yep. And then that get the, the layout changes because of. Mm -hmm fire truck access. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, you know, maybe you'll have 53 foot trucks going in there more often than you think and that those turning radiuses just need to be accommodated in that plan. And the lighting. Lighting eventually. would be, excuse me, you said lighting? Oh, lighting yeah. eventually, yeah. Yeah, we actually do show, you know, yeah. in the black dots, the pole lights, but all that comes during the final submittal process where, right. you know, it's a, da a dark sky friendly downcast light. Right. Uh, I'm thinking uh, with residential apartments, you're going to have people walking. Mm -hmm. In fact, since it's going to be um, ultimately, it's in, it's envisioned as becoming a uh, pretty d d densely commercial and residential area, mm -hmm. uh, and I think the residential could end up in the thousands of units, maybe over a long enough. Who knows what the future is, but in 
short. I'm thinking of how do people walk. And people coming out of the building will, some may want to walk south, some may want to walk north. Well, south is easy. You have a road, and there can be a sidewalk, and that's the easy part. But people really wouldn't want to walk around all the way around the south side of the building if they want to head north. What kind of accommodation could be made to allow pedestrians to walk northward? Well, it's over other property, right? It's on our property, yeah. so it would be a sidewalk right. to get in. So the one thing that I thought you were going to go with, and you know, again, <clears throat> this is a wonderful opportunity for incorporating everyone's um, food for thought, but, you know, presently we have no sidewalk on this portion of the property at all. And if that is the way I interpreted it, a sidewalk belonging to the roundabout, I think it would be ideal to incorporate the sidewalk to continue to walk right along that edge right through there. Yep. I mean, that to me makes a lot of sense. And, you know, we're going to be touching this part of the property right through here. So even to say, you know, whether we put a piece of sidewalk here and then another piece of sidewalk here or incorporate sidewalk right through there so that you could, in theory, have someone walk <coughs> here, walk straight through, and walk to Chris, Chris's building at the back end yeah. to do that. Certainly. But I do think incorporating definitely some sidewalk in through here to this part of the mouth of the driveway would make it more user friendly for uh, the residents on the third floor. So we'll duly note that because I think it's an excellent point. Yep. Is there a bus stop? Yes, it is. It's on. I, it is going to. Be yeah, there. it's on the bus. It's on the bus stop line. And is there a bus stop there now? It's either before or after. <laughs> I don't know exactly. Chris, do you know where the bus stop is? Right, right at the end of the road. road. Right at the end of the road. That's where yeah. 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 Uh, Brian, the, the um, commercial district front yard setback calls for 50 feet off the right of way. Is that something that's been overridden by party road master plans? Or? They're in contradiction. They're in contradiction. We have a 50-foot setback requirement, minimum 50-foot setback requirement, front setback, but it's in contradiction with from the Partly Road Master Plan. Okay. Commercial district. The, com the, com the commercial district has a, in location of front yard, be less than 10, Partly Road development should be set back a minimum of 50. You may be set back 50 from your right of way, I don't know, but... Um, from the boundary line? It says... It's from the right of way, from the street or the right of way. But I think this, so I think this is in contradiction with well, Partney Road uh, plan anyway, master plan. So, where would you? Sorry, are you wondering where to measure the fifty foot? Well, yeah, I was just looking at it, and you know, just looking at this parcel here, it looks like they're almost one hundred and one feet deep for the sand property. Can't honestly answer. Well, yeah. I, you know, I thought the master Technic plan was looking actually to bring everything up. forward. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So we're looking. The, the master plan looks to bring things forward. This state, the zoning orders are still in place. Right. They're steady, push it back. So <laughs> the rules say one thing. The vision says another. Right. Right. We will work between the two. Of them. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> that I appreciate. Anybody else have uh, any questions, comments, ideas? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Thank you uh, very much. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, oh, public pro Chris. public comment. Yeah. Um, I guess my. Can, can you state be, your name? Sorry. Uh, my name is Chris Farrell. I'm a yep. Jason property owner. Okay. Um, the only concern that I have with this project um, is the actual road itself. You know, you talk about sidewalks. And the road that accesses um, that Howard Printing spot and my spot and the veterinary clinic spot could possibly be maybe a car or a car and a half wide at this point. So any type of development in that area is just going to put continual strain on that road um, that's there. Um, I'm not sure if it's widening the road, how you know how that's going to work in this situation. Um, 
Do you know who owns the road? Is it a town road? No, it's, it's private. private. It's private. When you say strain, what do you have in mind? Well, I'm, I'm just saying that, for example, there's a lot of times that I will come through that area, um, and people will be pulling out of Howard Crane, or they'll be pulling out of, of uh, the veterinary clinic that has been approved. So you're actually putting more traffic into that smaller area. Um, so, so congestion. It, exactly. Um, and what it's doing is, is putting a strain on that road in terms of congestion. Um, you know, people coming in and out, I, I actually see, you know, people actually having to pull off the road because people aren't paying attention um, in that area. Um, that's just I, one consideration. I, that, that, that's a very good comment. I would think there's, there's two things to say here. First of all, the state is going to ultimately put a rotary in and their right of way, which I think is established, has been pushed back some way. Presumably, they are going to require that the road, that turn off of the rotary, will be built to current state requirements. So right. it'll be the two actual mouth going yeah, in. Yeah, the mouth going in. It'll be, it'll be two lanes wide. Yeah. It'll be defined, <clears throat> you know, state terms. It'll have granite curbs. It'll have sidewalks. It'll have whatever it has. That that's going to go further into the existing, let's call it private road for the moment, because I don't know that it's any different, um, that it currently does. It, it's conceivable that it goes in almost to the entrance of, well, to your property line anyway. It, it goes in to almost where there's a big tree right there, which is right just there, that tree right there. just before the entrance to Howard Printing. Because from what we've seen of it, based on the smaller drawing, that's pretty much where they're going to end up. In other words, they're going to have to do the mouth going into Sandry's. They're yep. going to have a sidewalk here, yep. and here's John's building. And, you know, it's going to come back in just about to that big tree. Is that big tree shown on the photograph? Yeah, yeah, no. No, it's not. But, you know, <coughs> needless to say, if we were to take this development, or we were to consider this development with 70 parking spaces, whatever it is, and nine residential units plus businesses in the day, I think it's reasonable to consider what the inflow or outflow is into that, into that rotary. And you know, if the road, perhaps for the, I don't know what it is, 20 feet, 30 feet, 50 feet, whatever it needs widening to that point, then maybe you should consider it as a part of the design. Right. Brian, can you, or maybe someone from the board can, a town road is normally 24 feet wide? A town accepted road, to my knowledge? 22. 22? Yeah. Okay. It's a three uh, wide road, isn't it? Public Works has, uh, has those space. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. But we'll, 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 we'll certainly take into consideration the fact that the state's going to have a new mouth going yeah. into Noah's Lane, and that we need to accommodate our increase in vehicle traffic if it's built out to the point of our driveway portion. Yeah. And then everything downstream of that or east of that would be Chris's normal traffic. So whatever he has it for in and out. But but certainly anything is it east? Anything east of that would be down to the to the, you've removed the density of the. That's right. Of, of, of how we're printing in that development, you probably at that point almost removed the density of the veterinary clinic, or the new one anyway. Mm -hmm. And you're down to just the businesses at the back, which are, which are you know, an 18 foot road or however wide it is, is probably adequate. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Well, that would take into consideration all eight points. Yes. Sorry, spoon yawned and it wasn't oh. meant to be a comment on your application. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you. Looking for no, any other business? No, no, we don't vote. No. Nope. Thank you. Any other business at all? Anybody? Yes. Looking for a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Done. Aye. Aye. Yeah.